Welcome in, everybody. We are live here on Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube. This is the Game of Inches podcast powered by Mayflower Sports. I'm Andrew McGinnis, joined by Jacob Smith and Christian Oxner of the HFX Wanderers. If you guys are watching us live, we really do appreciate it. Be sure to uh, comment some stuff below, ask any questions you do have, and make sure you like our videos and subscribe. If you're watching archived, uh, same thing, guys. Uh, share this around and let uh, your friends know that our fans of the team uh, we're doing lots of videos with the Wanderers and many other teams around the city. Let's jump into it, Ox. Uh, we haven't talked in a long time, uh, really over the phone or anything. What's going on with you, man? How are things? Things are good, man. It's nice to be back home here in Halifax around all the boys and, you know, my family, my girlfriend, all that good stuff. So, yeah, it's definitely nice to be home. Yeah, buddy. It's uh, it's obviously a good feeling to be out of the bubble. Might as well just dive right into it and get it out of the way. How was the bubble? Yeah, the bubble's tough, man. I mean, it's it's it is what it is, really. I mean, we, we you can only leave the hotel to to practice and play. I mean, I'm glad that hopefully I never have to do another bubble again as long as, long as I play pro sports. Fingers crossed. But hey, at least I, I have some cool stories to tell to tell my kids and stuff one day that you know I survived two bubbles. Not many people can probably say that. It was your birthday yesterday. I might as well ask you what you got up to. Is there anything special or just happy back home? Yeah, nothing special. Just, you know, hung out with, like I said, my girlfriend, you know, my family came by for a bit, talked to them, went and seen a few a few of the boys. So, yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy, you know, trying to keep it low-key till our, till our game on Monday. Yeah, exactly. Big game on Monday, obviously. Happy to be back. What are you expecting for the first game? Obviously, the grounds is going to be crazy, but it's going to be the first time you're playing in front of the home fans in like almost like a year and a half, two years. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, I kind of don't really know what to expect now. I, I, it's been such a distant memory. You know, I remember how, how exciting it is to step out there and how nice the grass is and all that stuff. So, man, it's going to be like me reliving it for the first time again, too, I feel like. So I'm so excited to get out there. And I know we have limited capacity, but I'm sure with the fans we do have, they'll, they'll be crazy and rowdy, just like it will probably feel like full capacity. So. I'm excited for the new guys on the team to get to to live through that too. Yeah, you mentioned like reliving it for the first time, and then of course, like you know, letting the other people on the team that weren't able to experience it before um, experience the Wanderers grounds, and obviously the atmosphere is crazy. You kind of answered my question I had planned already, but I kind of want to just get more out of you with it. Like, how do you how do you approach this game compared to let's say like your first couple times as a Wanderer at the Halifax Wanderers grounds? Cause I feel like obviously you're more experienced now. You've been a pro for a few years, but you mentioned, I mean, it's going to be still that same amount of excitement, right? Yeah. I mean, I, th I think you just approach it the same. I mean, honestly, when there's fans there, it, it, it's, we had it our last game in Winnipeg and even with, you know, there was only 2000 people there and they were really spread out, but you know, that's the difference. Like when you play in front of people, you know, it pushes you to, to play better, honestly. And I think you do play better with, with even, it's just a different energy when there's people in the stands. Uh, you know, it's something that I've realized now for playing a year and a half with no people there, you know, like so, sometimes it's hard to get up for games and stuff like that, especially when you're in the bubble and stuff mentally, you know, you just kind of get going. But when there's fans in the stands, it definitely gives you that extra boost, that extra energy. So yeah, I feel like it'll be great for us. I feel like we have another level we can go to when there is fans in the stands. Yeah, you kind of preempted my next question was how do like how do you get up for like the bubble? Like I know for me, like at work when I'm done, like I come home, like I kind of want to separate work from from like home where you're in the bubble, like you're going home and it's just like to a room and then you got to get yourself like mentally like ready and prepared to go for a big game. Like how do you do that? How do you manage that? Yeah, I think that's probably one of the toughest parts of the bubble that people don't really speak about the most is 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 professional sports is is probably gone like seventy percent mental nowadays and only thirty percent physical. I mean, everyone does the physical stuff. Let's be real, especially if you're a pro, it's your job for the most part. So, yeah, the bubble's tough because it's hard to to disconnect. You know. Uh, disconnect and, and, and check out from games, you know, because it's, it's something that's always on your mind. You come home, you know, in the bubble, there's really no days off. You go to the pitch the next day with the guys who haven't played and, and stuff like that. And even if you take a full day off in the bubble, it's like, what do you do? Just sit around and, and play ping pong all day or, or, you know, just, just watch movies. Like 
so yeah, it's definitely something that that helps being home. Is you know, today we have the full day off. I was able to go, you know, get to, get that lunch with my dad and just do little stuff like that. That you know, lets you check away from the game for for a bit. I think that's an important part too. And then what you mentioned there, I think, is really huge because like just like the downtime and like getting away from things and stuff like that. And I think that nowadays, like people don't really notice that as much about athletes. Like you said, the mental aspect and stuff like that. And you mentioned, you know, people in general, everyone's in shape. Everybody is kind of built already for the game. What can you say out there to people that might not realize that? Because I know you're a basketball fan as well. We always talk about the NBA together and the Lakers last year winning the championship in the bubble. And people are saying that there's like a, you know, an asterisk towards that. I think many people would almost agree that it's harder to do that. And based on what you said, it, it sounds like that's kind of true, that it's almost a little more of a challenge because you're going through a lot more. Um, you know, not sleeping in your own bed, not seeing your family. So, to, to, you know, to hear people saying it's almost easier to win in the bubble, that must be like kind of laughable for you. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to make it seem like, you know, we don't live the dream because we do. But yeah, it's it's definitely tougher. I mean, like I said, when you come home, you, you, you can check out the bubble brings so many, so many different things. But even when you're, you're a pro athlete, you know, you, you practice for two hours a day and you go home, but your job's not done. You know, you have mm -hmm. so much you need to do to, it's like, uh, our coach says, you know, your, your body, like your body is your job. You know, you have to keep that healthy. You know, if you don't have your body, you don't have anything, no matter how good your mind is. Right. Yeah. It's like, he says, if, if, the, if the mind says yes and the body says no, the, you know, the answer will probably be no. So, yeah, I mean, in that sense, we are home, but it's like you still have to do a lot of work, you know, what you put into your body, the extra recovery stuff, all that stuff as well. So, yeah, it, it is a dream. Don't get me wrong. But there's there's a lot more that goes into pro sports that I realized when I when I first came, came into the league, you know, that I had to do that, that you don't really realize, especially now, you know, I can be more honest when I see people, people play on TV. You know, it's one thing you realize is people have bad games, like people make mistakes, but you know, it's about, it's about learning from them and being able to play through them. And I think that's something, you know, I really learned when, when I came into the world of playing pro sports. That kind of leads into my next question there. Obviously you guys had a lot of stuff going on within the bubble that we really haven't touched on. Obviously Steven, he's resting well now. He's all better, hopefully, but he had a, a little pitch incident, uh, a sideline incident where he had to leave the bubble. Masut came in and took over. You guys kind of started out a little rough in the, uh, in the bubble, obviously flying all the way out to Winnipeg, new time zone, like new place. You're kind of like stuck there, new routine. How do you feel like the progression went through the bubble? Because I think in my opinion, you guys went from, you know, okay, starting out to kind of starting to show, you, show your true colors and you're starting to kind of peak at the right time when you're coming back to Halifax. Yeah, I think if we're, if we're going to struggle with stuff like we did, it's better to struggle now than it is the end of the season. You know, it's one of those cliche saying, uh, sayings, you don't want to peak too early, right? So, you know, I think I never really realized the importance of, of preseason and stuff like that until we went to the bubble and we played those first two games. And it was like, man, I felt so, so out of place. Like, you know, just like, where should I stand? What should I do? All that stuff. So, you know, those are all the things you, you kind of have to learn through. And it sucks we couldn't learn through them and get results from them. But at the same time, I think we're coming out from the bubble, you know, in the right direction. We, we, we you know, the results weren't the best, but the performances were good. So I think that's something we're going to feed off of, you know, going forward here. And we still have 20 games left, you know, and I feel like we've, we've kind of gone through the hard stuff as a team in the bubble. And, and we're, you know, we're just going to be, you know, hopefully smooth sailing here now with the momentum we have. Obviously, we do want to get more into, you know, the future and the team and all that kind of stuff. But I do want to, you know, a lot of the fans are probably curious what the, uh, the bubble was like, right? And I'm curious just kind of from day one, what it was like when you arrived and, you know, you go to your room and you mentioned like days off, like playing ping pong or different things you're able to do and stuff you could do as a team. You obviously have only have so many match days. Of course, you have practices and stuff like that. But what does it look like when you're not playing soccer, when you're in the bubble? <laughs> I wish I could give you like like a good answer or anything, but it's 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 really nothing crazy. It's it's what you think. We have the team room, you know, a bunch of guys kind of go there, banter, you know. We we watch lots of games. Luckily, the Euro was on, so you know, we had a projector. We always had games going, stuff like that. You know, we had like places you could go and stretch, ping pong table for some of the guys. But man, it, it's it was honestly nothing nothing like too crazy, too lavish. You know, it was just more just kind of hanging out with the guys, chilling and, and helping each other kind of get through it.
It seems like you guys have like a really good relationship with each other. I mean, I only I watch your guys' games more than a lot of other teams, obviously, but it really does seem like, and it's obviously some new players, but it really does seem like you guys gel really well together. And I know you're not going to sit here and you know and argue that if, if that wasn't the case, but I know it is. But what can you say about just how friendly everyone is together and the relationships and stuff like that, especially when you're all living in such a confined area? Yeah, I think it's a credit to, to Steven in, in the front office with the job they've done. If you look at their team, we're, we're a bunch of young guys, you know, everyone's kind of in the same age demographic and, and everyone strives to, to do well in football. A lot of guys want to go on to, to do good things, you know, get to levels above the CPL, you know, I know a lot of guys want to try and make that push to play for, for Canada one day too. So, you know, it's easy when everyone has a common goal like that. We, we all know what we're working towards together. And, and I think you see that with our group, you know, that's why we have that such good energy and, and you know, that, that brotherhood and that togetherness. Yeah. I don't take a, just a side note off from the Wanderers. Obviously you kind of touched on the Euros. What did you make of the Euros, man? Obviously me, you and the boys have talked like every day, all day when that was going on, but what did you make of it overall as a tournament? And I kind of want to get your opinion on the Euro versus the Copa America because it's something that I've kind of – we've kind of talked about, right, the different styles of play, the physicality. Like, just what did you make of both tournaments? Yeah, it, it was – We good? Skinny? Technical difficulties. We good? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you back. I think we, we might have lost Jake. I think I'm with you, though. We'll kick Jake out of there just for a second. He'll, he'll come back when he's not frozen. But, uh, yeah, I think he was just asking you about the Euros. I know we all talk about it quite a bit. But that's pretty sweet. I actually didn't really realize that. I kind of forgot about that, that while you were there, the Euros were going on. Um, that's kind of like a nice little side thing for you guys to uh, uh, to watch and stuff like that. Was there a lot of banter between, you know, guys about different teams or who you were cheering for? Or a lot of guys cheering for the same teams? Or what was up with that? Yeah, it's kind of funny. I mean, we had Corey, who, who was obviously English, and, and Rigi, who, who was Italian. So, you know, watching the final with those two guys was, <laughs> was, was pretty funny. You know, it was some good energy in the room. But, yeah, back to Jake's question, it, it was good seeing both on at the same time. Like, you could see that, you know, the Euro was more more of a tactical setup, you know, more, more thought out. And Copa America was just so fast-paced and so open. So, yeah, it was it was cool to see. It was cool to watch Messi win for sure too, and, and to watch those two different styles of, of football. It was it was really cool. I think it's you realize like now how special the World Cup is. It's something I didn't really realize when when I was younger, and I would watch it because I didn't really realize the the contrasting styles. But it's that's what makes the the World Cup so special is you get these teams that that go against each other that just play completely two different brands of football. And yeah, it's what I think it's what makes football so brilliant. So I just want to say we're two for two on live show cutouts. Purple Cow, if you're watching this, we got a problem. We'll try and get avoid those in the next one. But that wasn't yeah. too bad, Jake. That was a funny freeze, though. I, I, I didn't actually catch it, but I'm sure Ox got a pretty good laugh at it. But all right, Ox, I, I'm going to ask you this. We're kind of done with the bubble talk, enough with the bubble. But what uh, what changes now? What changes like routine? Obviously, I mean, you're away from... Um, different schedules now you're back home in your own place you get to see your friends family girlfriend but practice schedules back at the grounds how many practices have you had since you've been back home catch us up on what's been going on since you got home yeah we, we we've had uh we trained wednesday thursday we're off today and and luckily this year we get to to use the wanders grounds uh two days before games now so it's going to be great great for the body stuff like that I'm, I'm so excited to play on the grass man the only grass i've got to play on in the past you know year and a half has been tremont right so you know we all, we all, know, we all know how tremont is right so yeah i can't wait like to you know these guys keep posting a picture of the field it looks beautiful so you know, I know the, the grounds is a huge reason a lot of people came to it. And I just can't wait to, to touch the grass tomorrow and, and just see how it feels. And, and you know, take some years off my body. 
I was just going to say too, like obviously coming home is a huge thing, but something that we really haven't touched on, I haven't really seen anybody touch on is like kind of how the groups are the, the quote unquote, like bubbles have been shaped up for when you guys come home is how limited really your guys' travel is. Like I would say a big part of the first year was getting used to like those cross country travels, like going out to Winnipeg, going out to BC, like this year, you know, the furthest you're going to have to go is Ontario. So do you think that plays a factor in kind of keeping you guys fresh where you're not going to have to make those long, like six hour flights, seven hour flights across the country? Yeah, I think it will for sure. I mean, I think everyone learned a lot first year about about how to properly fly and stuff like that. I mean, I mean, who would have thought that the stuff that we, we would have to do, you know, is like the third most travel team in the world almost, you know, like no, no one could have predicted like you, you know, the toll it took, the front office, the players, like we, no one, no one, no one knew what, what they were signing up for there. So yeah, it's definitely going to make a huge difference. You know, now we, when we fly, we don't really have to change time zones, you know, things like that. And yeah, I think, I think it will definitely play, play a huge factor. You know, it's, it, and we'll see if it plays a factor too, because we won't have teams who have to fly across the country to come here. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see. And, and, you know, I I, I got to say I'm excited for it. I'm, uh, you know, flying across the country is is tough on the legs, man. Sitting on, you know, crammed in an airplane like that. So, yeah, it's it's definitely something that logistically made a lot of sense. I know I kind of said the bubble talk was over, but I was kind of curious, Ox, like how long it was really when you were in the bubble where it stopped kind of feeling like a road trip. That was kind of a question I wanted to ask that I kind of forgot to ask before, like. How long were you in the bubble before it wasn't a road trip anymore and was like, all right, this is where I'm kind of living for now? Because I feel like with a road trip, you go in with a plan. You're just like, okay, we're playing here, practice here, travel the next day to this team. How long was it before your body was like, all right, this is home for the next little while? Yeah, it probably takes about a week, a week and a half. And then, you know, you kind of get into into that routine of, you know, breakfast every morning, lunch, dinner, kind of stuff like that. So. Yeah, it's it, it. Like I said, it, it is what it is. It's the road trips. Uh, even our first year, we had to go on a month long road trip as well, right? The only difference is we we were able to kind of check out a bit and leave the hotel. But yeah, I mean, like I said, it's it's something you know. I, at least I could say I survived it. Yeah. So just going into the first game, moving off of the bubble there. What like what are you guys most excited for besides the grounds? Obviously, it's nice to be back at home playing in front of your home fans. But like, what besides that would you say you're excited to to experience or be a part of there? It's it's obviously a really I would say it's a magical grounds, quote unquote, just because of how it's really intimate grounds for like the league. A lot of the teams play in like these kind of massive stadiums where we're a little bit of a smaller grounds, and I feel like that kind of adds to the nostalgia of what we're doing here. Yeah, I, I think so for sure. And, and you know, hopefully uh, as uh, Nova Scotia continues to progress, we could, we could pack the place too. But yeah, I think, I think like you said, it's a smaller ground, you know, the fans are almost right on top of you, which, which adds to the atmosphere. And, you know, we came out of the bubble with, with a good result against Fowler. And I think the boys are kind of, you know, h- hungry to get going here. You know, everyone wants to play in that game on, game on Monday. So the level of training has been really high too. You know, that's a game everyone's looking forward to. So, yeah, I think I think you're going to see a, see a team come out that's really hungry to you know, and this is a team that hasn't been able to to show themselves to the fans yet in front of them. So I think a lot of guys are, are excited to display themselves. Well, I was going to ask that. I know there's a few players in the team that haven't been able to see the fans. Have they asked you guys any questions, or they've been talking about it at all and seen a little bit more peppy? Uh, looking forward to it. And, and what have you guys told them about the grounds and and uh, how different it is? Yeah, I mean. Um, I think everyone, you know, one of the big, big recruiting things for Halifax is the fans in the stadium itself, right? Imagine they send out videos when they, when they sign players. So we got to experience it a bit, like I said, with that last game in, in Valor. I think everyone kind of felt the fans back and, and kind of, I'm glad it was our last game and we didn't have to play any more games with no fans because now we're coming into this game too. And, you know, it's like I said, the fans are going to give us that extra boost. And I'm excited for all the guys who, who haven't got to experience it to experience how, how great it really is. Yeah. And uh, obviously we don't want to compare teams from last year to this year. <laughs> last year, you guys obviously had a magical team that went all the way to the finals, but what are some of the differences you've noticed between this year's team and last year's team? Because this year's team has a couple new faces and they're honestly, I would say making an immediate impact. 
Yeah, I think I think the front office has done well in that sense. We always hit in the draft, so we brought in good players. I think, you know, last year when 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 it's kind of a tournament format, you know, you you play a different style of football. You know, you can't make mistakes. So I think this year you see our guys playing with a little more freedom. You know, we're we're possessing the ball a lot better. You know, trying to get our attackers in good scoring areas, which we've done. We know the goals will come. So. Yeah, I think I think you'll continue to see it when you come watch games too. Like we're playing some some great football, and I think it's it's a credit to to you know the players. We wanted to kind of take that step this year, and you know the coaches really helped us do that. And yeah, I think I think it's great because it helps everyone you know showcase themselves like that. And it, it's it's the way the it's the direction football has gone. So I'm excited to you know bring this this exciting style of play to, to the fans. Yeah, that's one thing I'll say I noticed too is like you guys are attacking, I, I find, a lot more fluidly. Like, you guys are creating a lot more chances. And I think that's something that the Wanderers fans are going to be excited to see because we know from the past two years, like, we can defend very well. We're a very well-organized team. We have a good shape. We have a good – like, we have a good head on our shoulders as a collective. But going forward the last couple of years, like, maybe the goals weren't as plentiful. But this year, like, in the bubble, we've seen when you guys are on, like, you can score and you guys score big, spectacular goals. So I think as a fan – we're really excited to see the guys up front kind of bring a little more oomph this season than maybe previous years. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I get to see it in training every day, the quality these guys have. And, and I feel like, you know, what, once the ball gets rolling for some of these guys, we're going to be a very tough team to play against. You know, a few guys just need to get that first one, get that monkey off their back and they'll be fine. So I think once we do, once we do, you know, get the goals going, especially in front of the fans, man, it's going to be special. I think having depth is a huge thing in every single sport, but I think in soccer, especially with the grind and, and the training levels and the off season, stuff like that. Uh, it's not, you know, it, unnatural to get a little knock or to get an injury. So I wanted to ask you, we saw Peter go down with an injury earlier on in the season in the bubble. And I just wanted to ask what you thought about the people that came in and, and the players that stepped up in his place and how the team gathered defensively. Um, when he was out, because I feel like, like Jake said, you guys have always been a great defensive team. Obviously, Peter's been a rock back there right in front of you. What can you say about the core together that came together in his place? Yeah, it's always tough when we lose Peter. I mean, he's one of our captains, you know, so he's very vocal on the pitch too. But the guys who have stepped in, obviously, have done a great job. We had we had a few injuries that we picked up, and, and guys had to do things for the team that, you know, even Corey, he had to play left back for, for a game and a half, and he's never played there before, and, and he did a great job. So I think it's a testament to the team we have for sure. We have that depth, and we have, you know, a bunch of guys, like I said, who are hungry and, and want to prove themselves. And, yeah, a Kareem came in, you know, he was just a youth sports pick, was only with us for a week before, and he's done so well too. So, yeah, it, it's it's a credit to our team. It's a credit to to the front office, to the depth they gave us. And especially, you know, it's going to be tough now. When everybody's fit, we're going to have such such good players coming off the bench too that, you know, we'll be able to change games with subs. And I think it's a great thing to have. And, and you know, we're going to give the coach headaches. But like I said, I think that's a great problem to have too. Yeah, and you touched on uh, kind of my next question. You mentioned two guys that came out of the U Sports draft. You yourself came out of the U Sports draft. How encouraging is it to see, you know, a team like Halifax actually buying into the U Sports method of bringing players through the draft and watching them succeed? Just to, uh, there's, I think there's like four or five of you on the team that have come through the U Sports draft and you've all produced at one point or another when you've been called on. So just what does that mean to you as a person that came through the U Sports draft to see your club? continuing to go that model and give people a chance from these universities. Yeah, it's great. There's actually, I think there's six of us now. I mean, every youth sports player who's been drafted has, has, you know, either signed for the team, right. Or, or gone back to school, but they've done really well before. So I think it's good. It's good to show that the system works. It's good to show that, you know, when you are going to university, there is something to play for out there, right. Gives you, gives you that, you know, that little upper edge to chase your dreams, right? Is something, you know, I didn't really have when I was coming through till my last year, you know, and luckily enough, Steven took me. So I think, I think the U sports draft is, is great. I think it's, it's showing, you know, showing what players can do, you know, the level is, the level is high in this league. And I think, you know, the U sports level is, is on the come up too. So yeah, it's, it's great to see it. And hopefully it's just something that continues to happen for years to come. We've talked about it with you in the past, but, you know, obviously being from Halifax, we've known you for a long time and stuff. And 
Uh, I'm just curious. I know how proud you are for being uh, a Halifax native and playing for the Wanderers. And a lot of us uh, see you, you know, talking to fans and uh, going to schools and stuff like that. I feel like people might see stuff on Instagram or social media, but if you could just tell us a little bit about what that's like and doing stuff in the community that is probably a little more special to you because you're actually from Halifax. Any uh, stories you can tell us about going to a school or an event that might have been a little bit more special than another one? Another, another one? I can't think off the top of my head because it's it's because of COVID. It's been so long since we were able to, you know, kind of do these school visits and stuff like that, which sucks. Yeah. But yeah, it, I mean, it's great to go to the schools. You don't realize, you know, how how many kids really care and stuff like that until you go to the school and you see them all with their their wander stuff and all that that stuff on too. So yeah, it's great that the club is able to do that. We're able to to you know show the kids that you know like. I, I went to school around here too. You know, I, I did the same things you're doing and, and this is where I ended up and, and you can too. So I think it's great that the kids can see that and it's great that they, they have something to strive for and something to dream of. Yeah, definitely. And uh, just one thing I don't think we've ever kind of talked about, even just like off camera. And I've kind of probably always kind of want to ask it, but not really. You, obviously you don't get to give away your secret sauce, but <laughs> something that you're really good at is penalty shots. Like, what goes on there, man? Because, like, obviously, last night, me and you and uh, Vasily were texting about the Canada Mexico semifinal and the Gold Cup. And, like, one of my comments was about the penalty uh, shot that Mexico scored on was like the keeper didn't commit to either side. Like, he just kind of did something in the middle and just didn't really make a decision. And one thing I've noticed about you is you rarely do that. When you commit to a side, you commit to a side. Is there any sort of like techniques that you know besides like? kind of doing a little bit of scouting beforehand yeah i mean i mean there's a few i've been messing around with a few in practice and, and stuff like that just seeing if i can get it like the head games part of it but no usually it's it's just like the heat of the moment you know you, you just kind of try to, to get a read on the guy when, when he lines up to take it and, and when he steps up to take it you kind of you know it's kind of a split decision but yeah i mean it's something you know i've, I've gotten you know lucky with you know but i feel like i feel like i can i can read guys it's one of one one thing that helps me play be as a goalkeeper is you know my ability to read the game and, and stuff like that so i think i got a, a decent read on that stuff there and you know hopefully I, I can get a few more this season uh knock on wood we're looking forward to seeing it i'm, I'm curious about uh just like the how close the league is as a whole it seems like a very competitive league uh, you know, any given night, one team can beat the other. Would you agree with that? Would you say that this league is very uh, competitive and I wouldn't say it's really filled with a bottom team or a top team? It's quite competitive throughout? Yeah, for sure. I think the league is honestly underrated right now. I think it's, you know, um, since I've been in the league from my first year to now, it, it's crazy to see how the quality in the league has grown for sure. So, I mean, I think it's only something that's going to gonna keep improving. You know, it's it's a credit to, to all the players in the league who have who continued to grow with it. And, yeah, for me, I hope I see some guys start to make some jumps to some, some big leagues and stuff like that after after COVID is over because I think that was the point of this league in the first place to kind of sh show guys who haven't really got a chance. But, yeah, I think th I, the quality of the league is very, very underrated right now. We have some, some very good players, decorated players coming into the league. And, at the same time, we have very decorated coaches here who, who have been working with these players and kind of, you know, guiding them in, in, for every team, you know, even our team, you know, like the, the knowledge I have learned the past three years working under Steven is, is I can't even put in the words, right? So, yeah, it, it's good. It, it's good to see the league continue to grow. And I think that's something that's only going to continue to grow. I'm sure yeah. you oh, go ahead. Sorry, Jake, just, I got to no, follow up real quick. I'm sure you asked like and talked to players and you've been, Kind of friends with players that you've played against before for like when you played for St. Mary's or for your club with 30 Nellies and stuff like that. But what's it been like playing against former Wanderers teammates uh, with them shooting on you or just seeing them on the pitch, not wearing a Wanderers jersey? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's it was weird the first few times, but then it's kind of something you just, you know, you learn to, to, to live with. It, it's, it's a part of what it is. And yeah, I mean, you know, it sometimes happens at, at the amateur levels where you, you're with a guy for a year or two and then you play against them or, you know, you, you develop relationship with guys and then you go out there and play against them. So, yeah, it, it's good. After the game, we always try and catch up and, and have a few laughs. But, you know, on the field, it's all business. Yeah, and that kind of like – both of you kind of piggybacked my next question there. I was going to ask you about the familiarity in the league with some of the guys that used to play and then obviously the quality. Do you think that the fact – 
that maybe there hasn't been so much turnover in the league as as it's almost been able to give you guys a chance to excel because i feel like a lot of the guys now I've, I've seen across the three years i've been following the cpl pretty closely is a, like just the the quality of play looks so much better and there hasn't been like like i wouldn't say like half the leagues turned over right it's not like everybody here is like new so I, do you feel like that actual, like the chance to like get settled in the league, find your footing in a team and be able to hone your skills has actually been a benefit to you guys? Yeah, I think so for sure. I think that one thing that comes with that too is you're able to develop relationships on the field and stuff like that. You know, once you learn how guys like to play and, and things like that, it becomes a lot easier, right? So, you know, it's it's nice. It's nice in that sense, you know, and, and, and I think you see it, you know, with with all the teams in the league now, guys are kind of, you know, settling in. I think the bubble last year wasn't really a fair indication of some guys, you know, uh, there's a lot of injuries last year and things like that. So I think over the span of, of 28 games, you really get to see, you know, what a team is and what a player is. And yeah, I think I think in that sense, we're, we're our team is excited to do that. You talked about Peter being a very vocal player, but like obviously you're super vocal as a keeper on the pitch. And uh, as somebody that you, you and I always joke around about how I'm kind of like a newly soccer fan, but I, I've been watching for years, but uh, over the past couple of years, a lot more than others. And what I have noticed is the keeper is loud. You have to communicate. Uh, you can see the pitch really well. And this is a real natural question because I'm not really sure if you can tell us a little bit about what you're yelling and some of the stuff you're saying, because I'm sure everybody at the Wanderers grounds is curious kind of what you're telling certain players when the other team is kicking a corner kick or you're trying to set things up when you're kicking the ball yourself. What can you say that goes on when you're being vocal as a keeper? Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes there's some bad words, so I can't say those ones, but <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's like Jan said to me a few times before, you know, if, if I, if you get no shots in the game, it's perfect. Right. So, you know, I just try to keep the guys in front of me engaged and organized as best as I can. And, you know, sometimes when I'm in there, I, I just crack some jokes and things like that, keep the mood light. So, yeah, it's fun in that sense. You know, once you go on the, on the field sometimes in the games, you know, you're just having so much fun, you know, you get a bit carried away. And, and yeah, it's great. I think I yell some funny stuff on the field sometimes. Some of the guys will tell you. But, yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's definitely important to, to, to try and be that, that voice back there and that leader. So, so the guys know that you have their backs. Yeah. And just to piggyback off of that, how hard is it to kind of stay mentally in the game? You know, when say you guys are dominating possession, say maybe you had a shot or two in like the first half, but now it's like the 75th minute, you know, you haven't had too much action. How hard is it as a keeper to stay mentally engaged and make sure you're at your, your mental peak when your, your number is called and you do need to make a save or you need to make a play? Yeah, it's probably the toughest part about, about what we do is, you know, you could do nothing all game and then the 90th minute you get called into action, right? But I think it's 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 important. You have to realize how to check other games and check back in, you know? So maybe when the ball goes out or something like that, you take a quick break just to check out mentally before you, before you have to check back in again. It's something that I've learned in, in my few years in the league, how to manage and stuff like that. But yeah, like you said, it's the job. You have to make sure that you know, you could do nothing for 70, 80 minutes and then you have to, to make that save to get to, to you know, preserve the win or, or keep a draw or, or something like that. So, yeah, I think that's probably one of the toughest parts of, of what we do. But, you know, it's what we signed up for. You talked about the mental aspect of the game. And, and I've actually read something that says that soccer or football has the best home field advantage over every other sport, basketball, hockey, whatever it may be. Home field is the most important and, you know, we've heard quite a bit of heckling at the Wanderers grounds. It's, for the most part, pretty respectful. I'm not saying the Wanderers fans are, you know, ill-behaved. But I'm curious what your experiences have been at, at other fields. If you can tell us, you know, is it the same thing we might hear at the Wanderers grounds? Have you heard some funny things yelled towards you or your players? Is it, uh, is it funny to be chirped to uh, people yelling at you? Do you hear them yelling at you, what they're saying? Like from your vantage point, I know you only hear Jake whenever we're all yelling for you, but uh, I guess it's just Jake's voice is very projective. But what can you tell us about what it's like playing as a visitor? Yeah, I was kind of sad. I don't know why you said you heard stuff when you've definitely been doing some chirping before. Don't try my mind. <laughs> oh, I've heard it, but I'm doing it too. Yeah. Hey, but, um, we don't even have amendments here. Yeah. But my, my, uh, 
my first year, you know, my, my first game I played was, was against Calgary and it was kind of my taste to it. You know, they're, they're a rowdy bunch up there and, you know, I pretty much the second half I went and played against their fans and I just got abused for 45 minutes. And, <laughs> and after that, I, after that, I kind of, kind of learned the in and outs and yeah, right now I'm fine with it. You know, if fans want to start giving me some banter, I'll just give it back. You know, I'm um, just at, I'm just at that stage with it. You know, some of the Valor guys were giving me giving me some uh, some stick when we were up there playing. I was giving them a few thumbs up and stuff like that. You know, it it doesn't at this point in my life it doesn't bother me. You know, and and if they say some stuff, I, I don't mind giving it back. You know, it's it's I know it's all for good fun and. You know, it, sometimes it makes you play better when, when, you know, the other fans, if the other fans are trooping you, you know, you're doing something right. So. Yeah. Just before we uh, get out of here, this is probably my last question, non-soccer related, probably haven't had a, a platform to speak about the sun's loss, but how do you feel after that, buddy? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty gutting, but at the end of the day, if we're going to lose to anyone, at least we lost to Giannis. So. Yeah. Big, big Greek ties in this, uh, in this uh call right here so obviously if you want to lose to anybody i'm sure it's to honest but up to nothing man what the hell like cp3 was garbage booker garbage like guys just what happened man what happened oh yeah. has been quiet since that loss yeah, no, I, I, know. I, haven't heard too many basketball talk. I haven't even heard yeah. him talk about basketball, basketball since that loss i didn't even want to deal with the lawyers so i couldn't even go in that <laughs> <laughs> couldn't handle the boys heat no We'll, we'll check in one. with the Ox, uh, like after some games and stuff like that. And we'll probably, you know, do a couple more quick hits and stuff like that. But we just wanted to like generically talk about the bubble and just the team in general. But I guess we've kind of already asked you about the team. But before we close things out, a lot of the fans probably wondering what they can expect. It's a pretty general question here. But uh, what can you tell them to expect when they're heading to the first game back at the Wanderers grounds? Yeah, I think they should expect to see, you know, a, a good a good young team that's that's excited to play for them, you know. We understand who the fans are. We understand that that they they pay their hundred money to come see us. So, no matter what happens on the day, you know, it, we'll we'll always work for the fans, you know. We may not put in the best performances and play the best games, but we know as a team we'll always give everything for those guys. So, Whatever, whatever happens on the grounds, whatever the outcome, the fans, the fans will know that that we put everything we have into the games. Love to hear, it, buddy. Next time we talk, well, I'll have the studio set up. The studio's half put together right now. You can probably see I got a weird ass camera angle with the door in the back. Just we're trying to get it together. But next time we have you on, we'll have you in person, and we'll we'll have a we'll have a deep dive into how you got to the to the stage you're at. Sounds good. The fans Looking are certainly excited. It. We see the uh, the Facebook group. The fans are already talking about doing their march and figuring the ways they can with the uh, restrictions. So the city's buzzing. They're happy to have the Wanderers back. We appreciate Ox for joining us. I'm Andrew McGinnis. That is Jake Smith for Christian Oxner. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.